Hello and welcome back to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing our sea shack scene. In this episode we'll be looking at the textures and materials and reminding ourselves of techniques of linking materials and things like that. So this is where we got to last time. And if I go into see-through mode then we can kind of see the rocks there as well. And in order to shade the best place to do that would be under the shading tab. So let's go there now. That puts us into look dev mode and gives us an HDRI in the background. Now I've just brought this in from my previous scene and it's probably worth saying you can do that by file append and you can bring items in from other scenes. You can even bring in collections and things like that. So it's already textured in some way, but don't worry, I'll go through how I did that. I've also got probably a different HDRI to what you've got. If I click on the down arrow here, you can change your HDRI in here. I always choose one that's quite gray so this being the best one for that. That way I know my colors are going to be more precise. If you choose a colorful HDRI like this one, you can see the difference it makes because the HDRI gives off the light and the color of the light from the HDRI. So I would suggest choosing a nice gray one. So we'll start off in look dev mode for now, but we will go to rendered mode shortly and I'll be putting in an HDRI of my own. So let's click on one piece of wood and I'll act as if it hasn't got a texture. So I'll close this one down and yours should be covered in a gray looking material like this. So it's simple enough. You just click the new texture option there. It may be that you have the default texture and it will be something like this. Remember you can get these options over on this side as well with the material menu tab here. And all these are the same as these, but you do have some options up here which are extra. Generally speaking, the defaults are fine for a low poly material. You may want to increase the roughness. If we bring it all the way down, it should sort of reflect some of the HDRI. As you can see, it's sort of reflecting a bit there. And we don't really want any reflections in our model, so you can put it right up. But I think for the most part, I kept mine on 0.5. But I think somewhere around 0.8 will be great. Then we can go to the base color here, click on the color, and we can change our color in here. If you zoom in a bit and then click on the color, this wheel is a bit bigger. You've got tone on the side to make it darker or brighter and bring it over to here for the browns, a bit darker and somewhere around there is a nice sort of woody color. It's a good idea to name your materials because you'll have lots of materials in this scene. So this is going to be wood four because I think I've got three other ones. No, in fact, I've got four other ones. So wood five, this one is. Now a couple of tips, I don't go too saturated, as you can see over here, you can go very saturated and dark, and it does give a sort of woody look, but it's a very saturated, colorful wood. And what I mean by saturation is the more colorful it is. So in the middle here, we've got very sort of muted colors, pastely you could say, and then to the outer ring, you've got more saturation and more vivid colors. So I tend to go somewhere in this range here, and not too dark as well and I've created a few different colors. So I suggest using maybe three or four different colors of wood to add variation to your objects. Now it's important to know as well that objects can share materials. So this object has got wood dark and this one has also got the wood dark shader. And any changes I make in here, you can see are changing the ones that have the same material. I'll undo that. We can link materials or copy a material from one object to the other by clicking on the objects that you want to copy the material to and then the one you want to copy from last. So that becomes the active object and it gets a yellow outline because it's active. The other ones are orange and then press Control L materials and that will link the materials together. Now they all share that wood five material and when I make changes here, it will make changes to each of them. I'll undo that. Now I'm finding the HDRI a bit bright, as you can see on these pieces of wood. It's a very light HDRI. And I want to texture the C now. And for that, we're going to need to see some transparencies. And I really want to see the full effects of my HDRI. So I'm going to go to the render tab. Now I've got no lights in my scene yet, so it looks all dark. The first thing I'll do is add an HDRI. So we go down to the object panel here, to the world tab. And there we've got the background and we can change the color of the background quite simply here, but we can add one of our own HDRIs like the ones in look dev mode across here. So back to rendered mode, shift a to add 
or you can go to the add menu up here. Texture, environment texture. Don't choose an image texture. Lots of beginners make that mistake. Choose an environment texture. If we hook that up now, we'll see it go purple. And that's a good indication that you haven't got a file loaded into your environment texture. And occasionally if you move that HDRI image file, then Blender will lose the link to that image. So find an HDRI. I get most of mine from HDRI Haven, and I've got a folder full of HDRIs here. Now I think the one I went for is this nature one here. So it's got a bit of blue, a bit of green in there as well. And I'll give that a try. And that looks fine, it's not too bright, and I can add some lights in a bit later on. Unlike the other HDRI, which is very bright, as you can see there. And it's got a bit of green, perhaps a bit too much green, so I may change that later on. But it is important to have an HDRI in the background for the moment because you want to see what the reflections are doing and things like that. Let's just quickly texture our rock. I'll quickly hide the water with H, so select the water and press H, or you can use the collections over the side here to hide them. And let's create some rock textures. Usually when I click on items, we see the object shading here, but we're still in the world tab. I need to change over here to object. I'll give this a new, and I'll call this rock one. And give it a sort of grayish color like that. Perhaps a touch of blue, because it is going to be underwater. And maybe a bit brighter as well. Somewhere around there. I'll click on another rock, and give this a rock two color. Rock two. And this is going to be similar to this, so we can get the eyedropper here and select that color, and then we can just adapt it really slightly, maybe a bit more towards the purples. That's great. And then one last one, rock three. Grab my eyedropper so I can select that color, and maybe this one is going to go across to the greens a bit more and a touch brighter, somewhere around there. It's got lots of different colored rocks. I can now select a few rocks with shift, Select the one I want to copy from last, which is this one in this case, and Control L to link the materials. I'll select a few other rocks, and then the one I want to copy from last, Control L, materials, and the same for this color here, so these few last rocks around the place. That's great. Now my HDRI does look very dull. I might change that in a bit, but for now let's look at the water. Alt H to make hidden objects visible. So Alt H and the water will come back and we'll select the water and give it a new material. Now this is much simpler than it seems. I'll just move this up a touch so I can see my principled BSDF. Now the transmission is whether it's see-through or not. So let's pull that right up to one. And it looks rather odd at the moment. There's a few things going on that we have to change in order to make objects see-through. So we need to press N to bring up this toolbar over here and go to Options. And under Options, we've got Screen Space Refraction. We have to have that ticked, but still nothing's happening. We need to go to the Render tab as well and put Screen Space Reflections on. And you can see that it's reflecting up the top there now, which is good but it's still not see-through, we need to come in here and put Refraction on. And now we can start to finally see through our object. It's very rough at the moment, so let's bring down the roughness. And now you can see, you can start to have a play with these things and get some fun water-looking objects. Now I turn down my Index of Refraction here, IOR. So this is like really thick glass. And I think that's normal for glasses, 1.45. But if I bring this right down, it looks a bit more sensible, should we say. So 1.05, and it's still got some refraction going on, but it looks a lot better. We can also change the base color as well. And then you can give your water a tint of greeny blue like this. And we're certainly starting to get somewhere. We certainly need a bit more light in our scene, but it looks quite nice. Now, I think it looks a lot better when you have those beveled edges around the place. So I'm into edit mode, looking at those bevel edges. And can you see it adds that sort of glint of brightness to the edges. And that's why I chose to bevel it. So that's the water. 
but you can see it does depend a lot on where your lights are positioned and your HDRI because there's a reflective element to it and there's a translucent element. Now if I go across to the render tab again and go down to film, there's transparent. If I turn that on, you'll see that the water is still showing the background and that's a limitation of the transparency. And that's something you want to think about with your HDRI in the background. You might want a more bluey HDRI and therefore it's quite important to think carefully about your HDRI and experiment with them. I'll quickly do some experimenting of my own. Got a very bluey looking one there. That one's quite nice and that's from HDRI Haven. Sunset in the chalk quarry. I think that may be the one I went for in fact. Now along with setting your materials up, you'll want to sort out some lighting. Now I mentioned in the weld tutorial that I use three point lighting and I'll use the same here. So let's go to top view quickly with seven on my numpad, shift right click to move my cursor to position and shift A to add a light and I'm going to use a sun. Sun is nice and easy and there's not too much you have to change. It just offers a uniform light from that direction. I can rotate this by pressing R and you can see it pointing at the shack or you can move this yellow spot and point the sun in different positions. If I move it upwards and then drag my yellow dot towards the shack, you can see that it's now pointing towards the shack. So we can see the results of our lighting a bit there. Let's go to the lighting tab over here and we can see that it's got a strength of one and we've got shadows turned on. But a problem I'm having is that I can't see my shadows. Now I have mentioned before that our scene is rather oversized and this again is a common problem that beginners make. If we look at one of these stilts and press N, we can see that that is 40 meters high roughly. So this is a huge great shack. The light, if I select on that, this has a clipping start and a clipping end. If I bring the clipping up to let's say 100 meters, in fact, you can start to see the shadows having an effect coming across there. So I need to bring this right up. In fact, I'll just type in 400. That will make sure it covers everything. Now clipping is useful if you have huge scenes and you want your lights to just affect certain areas. And sensibly, lights do have a fall off where they become dimmer at distance. That's not so noticeable with the sun, of course. So there are reasons that clipping is there. But just remember our scene is very oversized. Yours may not be, but mine is. And therefore clipping is something that's important to consider. We also see that, and we saw it in the last series as well. If I go to view, we have a clipping start and a clipping end. If I change the clipping to 100 here, everything disappears and slowly it comes into view when I click and drag and bring the clipping of my view up. And I can just set this to 1000, which it already was, and everything's in view. That's important when it comes to adding things like cameras and you can only see, let's say, half your object or something like that. So now we can see some effects of our shadows just there. I can probably turn this up just a touch, so 1.5 perhaps. I like to change the color, give it a nice yellowy color. And then let's go to top view and duplicate this. So shift D over to the side there, rotate it round and shift D for some backlighting and rotate it round. And there we go. Let's change the intensity of some of these. So this one can be one and my backlight can be 0.5 and the color of the backlight to something like a blue and this one to a red. That gives me some nice lighting and I can get those reflections as well across the top of my water. I can also change the strength of my background depending on how I want it to influence my scene. So I might bring the background down and then the lights up and experiment to get the right effects. A couple of things that might be important to you. The lights usually have shadows ticked by default. So in the lighting tab and they've got a softness of about three. So if I choose my main light here and turn that down, you can possibly see in the shadows that they become a bit more crisp. I'll turn that up even more to four and there you can see the crispness of the shadows or the softness of the shadows, depending on how much I change this now. In fact, I kind of like it at strength four, perhaps down just a touch though. 
to three. At this point, well, now we've got our light set up and things, we can go back to our water and choose object to bring up our material. And then I can start filling about with the color a bit more, maybe give it a bit more green in this case, because the HDRI is quite blue and we're really starting to get somewhere. So as a homework task, once again, you can experiment and play around with the materials until you find a look that you like. In the next episode, I'll be going over some of the additional items that I've made. Not all of them, because some of them will be fairly obvious at this stage, but perhaps you should have a go at some of those objects and then comment below as to which ones you're finding difficult. And that will remind me to make sure that I go through that one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.